Okay, the first thing I'll say is um, I'm not an expert in this area. Um, I'm not an educator. Um, I'm not an economist. I'm not a survey expert. But about 12 months ago, I was visiting a client. Um, and this, this comment came through. Potential new entrants need to know the theory, but before they are recruited, employers would rather they had sat behind the wheel. Um, can anybody remember back to the sort of late 70s? I'm sure a few faces around the room can. Thank you very much. <laughs> Most of you can't. At that time, we had things called professional engineering apprenticeships. Uh, in other words, when you went to university, it wasn't just a sandwich course. If you wanted to become a chartered engineer, you worked over a five-year period. Part of that was education. Part of that was working in industry. And I went through that process. And when I came out of that process, uh, and I was an electrical engineer, sponsored by the Midlands Electricity Board, um, not only could I theoretically envisage, view, design, and work around a high-voltage power station, uh, sorry, a substation, for example, I knew what it looked like. I knew what it felt like, I knew what it smelt like, and I could actually do something meaningful. And that was called a professional engineering apprenticeship. What I could do basically, I'd pass the driving test. It wasn't just a case of the theory, I could actually drive the car as well. And that was the starting point. Because at that point I started to think, uh, maybe this is something we need to, to discuss. So what are we here to do today? Why is this so important? That's the first thing I'm going to cover. Then we tested the water. How did we do that? What do, did we decide to do following that? Uh, what was the methodology of the survey we deployed? What were the key results? And some outline conclusions. So, why is this overall topic so important? I think it's quite simple. As the use of BIM increases, unless we have the proper skills, the progress could grind to a halt. Now, if we're looking at the acceleration of take up of BIM in the marketplace. Let's suppose that we need 5,000 BIM professionals in the industry now. In three or four years' time, we could need 50,000 professionals in the industry who are BIM savvy. That's a massive area of growth. This is an important topic. This is something we can't say, let's worry about it in two or three years' time. Let's worry about it when we get to uh, having defined level three. Let's worry about the skills then because there's a lead time. Unless we worry about it and open the debate now, we could have a real problem in two or three years' time. That's why it's important. And why is it urgent? Um, April 2016 is no longer a future target. We're actually here. We've heard this morning from Terry and uh, from the others where they are with, with BIM. BIM 2016, April the 4th has been and gone. You know, this is urgent as well. Okay, so when we realised there was a potential problem, uh, we tested the water, and, and what I mean by that is, we went out to some of the contacts that we have in industry through Building Smart and through the Open BIM Focus uh, publication that we put out, and we asked a few questions, and sure enough, there was some concern out there. So we then went to some specific names in the industry to see if they would give us some opinion um, what is this problem? How are you tackling this problem? And, and first of all, Peter Hansford was very pleased to give us a, um, a, a generic comment, and something's gone wrong with the formatting here, but never mind. Uh, you all know who he is. But more important than that, we then went out to a few names in the industry and said, can you give us some thoughts on uh, the skills issue? What are you doing? What would you like to be doing? What are the problems? And some of the people who fed back to us, uh, Dave Philp, somebody who we know very well, um, Tim Platts, uh, Tim's not here today, but BIM for SME, SME, um, the community itself is one that's deeply concerned about uh, acquisition of BIM skills, uh, and they'll be speaking later on uh, on this topic. Um, Peter has already spoken uh, on, a, on a different subject, but Peter was very pleased to share with us some thoughts uh, from Balfour BT. Uh, Alex Lubbock, uh, who will be speaking a little bit later, see Alex in the audience here, he gave some thoughts on um, where Carillion are, so we had some industry feedback. And we had two um, universities who were very pleased to share with us their thoughts, uh, Professor David Boyd from Birmingham City University and Dragana Nikolic from uh, Reading University. So we went out to a few people and they said, yes, this is something that we do need to debate. So from there, we decided that we needed to do something. And the, 
Guy, you call it the Building Smart Survey. Uh, it was a Building Smart Survey in conjunction with BRE, um, but it was commissioned specifically to report back at this conference. So um, there are too many titles for things. I'm going to call it the BIM Prospect Survey because I think it's associated with this particular conference. So we decided to commission um, some input into this conference. And we sought opinions specifically from three groups. The first one being the readers that we have through uh, Open BIM Focus, the BRE database, and very specifically the SME community, because um, as, as will become apparent, this is an area, I think, of great concern if we don't address this. Now, the survey that we did was not, not to provide a definitive report. It was defined to initiate a debate and to inform um, speakers who could actually present opinion. Because I believe if we don't have this debate publicly, things are going to drag the feet. We need to push this agenda. And what I will ask today is that uh, when we finish these sessions, if anybody in the room actually does agree that this is an area that we need to push, please use any contacts that you have, any links that you have, to push this agenda. Because if we don't as an industry, it will, it will stop. So what was the methodology uh, we deployed? Um, well, of course, everything is online today, so we did an online survey. Uh, we specifically focused on the provision of BIM Level 2 and beyond, because, as I say, we were reporting with this conference in mind, so there was no point looking at retrospective. We had to look forward. The focus was very much on UK industry, uh, education and training, so this is not an international um, survey. This was something very focused at the UK market. Special emphasis, as I've already said, on the SMEs. We ran it from December to mid-February. So again, this was not a prolonged thing. This was a very focused, um, high-intensity push to get some uh, feedback. And the analysis from the report has been circulated to the relevant conference speakers so that they can use that to inform and produce some expert um, presentation and conclusion. That was what we set out to do. So, some notes. Um, as I said, it wasn't designed to provide in-depth analysis, but rather to open up the debate um, and see if we can find a way of building a closer relationship between industry and education and training. I think that's where we need to, to start. It's also important to note that the audience for this survey, because it was Open BIM Focus readers, because it was BRE, and it, because it was members of BIM for SME, are probably a little bit more BIM savvy than the typical survey audience. So we have to bear that in mind when we look at the results as well because they will be slightly skewed uh, because this was a more BIM savvy um, audience in the first place. We deliberately did not give a definition of BIM. Um, my experience in the past is that if you put 10 people in a room and ask for a definition of BIM, you'll get 10 definitions. And if you give someone a definition of BIM, you'll get 10 different interpretations. So our view is, let's not do that. Let's just use BIM. There's enough information out there on what BIM is. Um, and, um, you know, we, we don't need to now uh, sort of push this message. And I'd just like to give a, a selection of some of the findings uh, from the survey. As I say, we're not here to draw the conclusions in this particular uh, presentation. This is just to say what we're doing, why we're doing it, and here's some of the things that um, came back, which we think are pretty important. So firstly, um, I mentioned this was very much a UK survey. Um, most of the respondents were from industry and uh, a few were from education, which was kind of disappointing because we did uh, uh, target very specifically a lot of the educational institutions. Um, hardly surprisingly, 60% of respondents were from SMEs, uh, where the definition of SME is less than 250 employees, uh, but 40% of the respondents were from businesses employing less than 50 employees. So if we take away the big contractors at the one end and the engineering groups and the client, I think this group of 50 employees or less, this is probably the key BIM group. These are the uh, architects, the small design houses, the small consulting practices, the day-to-day the, the -day worker bees. And, and without them having the BIM skills and the BIM knowledge, I think we do potentially have a major problem as we start to move down the supply chain. So that's the same thing in, in, a, in a picture. But hey, let's move on. 
Key findings two. Almost three quarters of the people that we um, uh, that responded said that they already had BIM-specific roles in their company. Now, that's, that's quite high. Uh, I think it's already been referenced, the NBS 2016 survey, which is uh, pointing at, I think Terry, you uh, came up with this figure, it's pointing at 48% uh, BIM adoption at the moment. As I did say, our <coughs> survey audience was pro probably more BIM savvy, so it's understandable that that was a, a slightly higher figure in the, um, in the people that we surveyed. Uh, is your company ready for level 2 BIM? Uh, no, in mind we didn't um, define what level 2 BIM was. Uh, there's plenty of definitions out there. And over, well over 50% said yes. Over 50% said yes. Uh, just, just think, I, I, I'm not here to define if this is correct or not correct. Um, how many people in the audience, just put your hands up, think that half of the British industry at the present moment is ready and able to deliver level two BIM? Well, put your hands up. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? A survey can show you whatever it wants to show you. But a comment on that one, uh, yeah, it suggests that everything's rosy with uh, level two BIM. Half of the people out there are ready for it. However, level two BIM is in its infancy. What happens when level two BIM really bites? Um, are we going to get the same level of response? Do people really understand what level two BIM is? And again, I, I refer to, I think it was yourself again this morning, Terry, that the realization of level two BIM is just beginning to dawn what it is. And as that actually, people start to understand what that is, then I'll see, I think we'll see that this figure will reduce. Okay, another interesting one was, uh, have you had any problems recruiting for BIM-specific roles? And that was uh, a third, it's, the, the definition is not very good here, but a third were yes, a third were no, and a third were non-applicable. Um, so, of that, if we say non-applicable, those are people who aren't doing BIM, then half the people who are doing BIM have had difficulty recruiting for BIM-specific roles. And if we take this in context again with the NBS statistic, that um, only 48% as opposed to the 75% that we were looking at here are doing BIM. This really is something that I think will cause problems in the future. Have you had problems recruiting BIM specific roles? What were the issues? Uh, and again, I'm sorry it's not very clear here, it's much clearer on my screen here, but if you can't read it, um, the salary expectations were too high. Lack of skills, lack of experience, general lack of understanding relating to BIM. So that's not particularly encouraging that um, it is difficult to recruit BIM um, savvy employees, BIM knowledge and a lot of it relates to, let's put the salary expectation out on one side, is down to lack of skills and lack of experience. This is why people are having difficulty uh, recruiting. Okay, do you have any links with BIM education and training providers? And over half the respondents said yes. That's good, that's good. Uh, the next few slides will actually show that um, when we look at the education side of this, the links are far lower. And uh, I just want to finish on a few of those slides. I say this is not definitive conclusions. This is just uh, some of the things that jumped out at us. So uh, the next question is, have you recruited anyone directly from education? 40% uh, was non-applicable, 9% said yes, so out of those who replied, only one in six uh, entrants into the industry are coming from education into the BIM field. Now that's possibly a concern, because that really is the, is the pipeline. This is the sausage machine that should be feeding the industry, and at the moment only one in six are coming from education. <coughs> Um, and the last findings that I've got here, who do you go to for education and training? Uh, colleges and universities are here. The others are uh, industry bodies, software vendors, um, and in-house. Again, potential problem here. If we are looking at the uh, educational establishments to help us uh, bring these skills into the industry, 
as I say, it's less than 10% less than are coming from education at the present moment in time. And the last question that I've got here, which um, I think is very important, which of the following would help solve the recruitment problems in the medium to long term? Uh, and it was fairly equally split between apprentice courses, sandwich courses, undergraduate courses and postgraduate courses. So the industry clearly feels that there is a need that we should be drawing more people in from education. But we should be doing it in a way that is going back to the, the days of the professional apprenticeships, the days of the sandwich courses. This is strongly leading towards a, a much closer working relationship required between um, industry and education. I'm sure some of the speakers will comment on that. So finally, as I say, this was just some of the numerical findings and what we did. Um, so this only delivers the background and selected key findings. The, the speakers that follow will present um, their own conclusions and certainly the conclusions that uh, are more important than, than, than my wafflings up here at the present moment in time. But what is evident is the availability of current and future skills is a matter of great concern. We ought to be concerned. If we think it takes three to four years for somebody to go through a university college and come into industry and then get another 12 months, two years practical experience before they can really be classed as operative, then that's a five or six year period. We really ought to be concerned about this. We can't delay this uh, any further because if we do, there's a potential ticking time bomb as far as I'm concerned. With that, I'll sit down, shut up and listen to the people who actually know what they're talking about. Thank you.